right. So there is there there is a uh, folder out there under the in class with today's date on it. All right. And if you do go out to that folder, just to show you what's in it, uh, there's a bunch of stuff. But the stuff I'm going to concentrate on is what you see right here. There is a folder called Sprite Games. All right. And there's a bunch of stuff I found. A three. I didn't go through this at all, but a three-pronged thing on how to uh, create Space Invaders using Sprite Kit, some trigonometry things, some other stuff. Some of the stuff in here I tried. I tried also, they're, they're, they have a, uh, an adventure game right from the developer iOS. So I loaded it in just for the hell of it, and it came up with 68 errors. So I said, oh, I don't think that's a good one to be showing the class. All right, so I also found, just so you see this, just a couple things. This, I, I watched a couple of these videos on YouTube, and they were pretty interesting. A uh, simple iOS Swift game, part one, and a Sprite Kit, part one Swift game. They're okay, and they're not real long either. So, But uh, I thought this was interesting. I found this site. It's, it says zero, zero tutorials on it. I named all these, so if you hate the naming structure, it's on me. But um, that's what this is. I found this online under SpriteKit.com tutorials. Those are all tutorials on different games. All right? So you see there's plenty of them. Now, what you find is some of them are old, so some of the stuff... You know, you know how things have been changing in this language with the IDE, with the operating system, etc. All right. So what I did, because uh, you know, and I've done this before, is I went out to that um, Ray Wenderlich site and I went through his tutorial. All right. And there actually is already a lecture, very similar to the one I'm giving right now, that's out there on the system when I went through this. All right. It's already out there. I, I went in and did it yesterday morning. It was about 35 or 40 minutes long. But I'm going to talk about a few of the things that are in here again today. All right. But what I want to mention to you is I started to type this stuff in. All right. And there's not a lot of code in the particular example. There's some. They tell you how to create it, etc. And we'll go through this stuff in just a minute. But what I want to mention to you is they said, okay, now go in here and remove what's in there and then start, then just put this in. Okay. So they said, if you did load, put this in. Well, that was fine until I got to that line, and it didn't recognize game scene. All right, and it said, "Well, don't worry about it, basically, because you'll 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 get it later." But even when I tried putting in more code, I kept getting all sorts of error messages. All right. The funny thing, though, is when I went out and downloaded the one from here because the source code is included, it worked. It's a cheesy game. You've already been warned. It's got this little thing that's in here. I just want to show you. That's the ninja. All right? And there's one ninja. And what happens after you do this, those are the monsters. See the difference? And what happens is you're, you're able to uh, take and, and, and click anywhere basically on, on the screen, and little projectiles will fly out from the ninja. And you're, the idea is you're supposed to shoot as many monsters as you can. They come uh, at a fairly regular rate, etc. And if if too many of them get across, you lose. If you get 30 or more of them, you win. Okay, so that's the idea behind the game. All right, they talk a little bit about trigonometry. They talk about the fact that there is a physics engine built into this. All right, so we'll talk about that in just a second. The other thing I want to mention to you too is again, someplace in here I can't remember I, where I put it. Yeah, this was another tutorial that I found. This woman said that, I think it's a female, she's got a, a foreign name. She said that she took this Code Fellows iOS boot camp, and you're going to see this in just a second. Um, they made a very simple game. That's in there, but I'm, I'm trying to find out. I thought I, I saved it, but I don't remember where I put it. All right, but someplace else in here, and I'll, I'll try to remember to show it to you before we, before we finish. If you go out to the actual developer iOS site, 
they have a thing in there for an adventure game. And that's like I said, that's the one where they've got it built both in iOS and in OS X. But again, it's it's older and it had errors in it. Yes. No, those are swing games. No. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. Thank you. All right. All right, so I want to go back, and this is the one, again, that you have. Before we go through it, though, I just want to mention, as off times, you know, and, and again, Travis aside, we've all made our jokes about Apple, etc. and there are things, a lot of things you can make jokes about. But when you look at this, this is a 100-page long Sprite Kit programming guide that was put out there, so I saved that. And I guess I should have looked to it, looked at it sooner, but I didn't. <coughs> and I started to read through it, and there's a lot of really good stuff in it. All right, but again, the problem is, if you really want to read these things, as you probably guess, you don't you don't finish them in like a, like an hour, or or so. You know that you can spend a day on that, going through examples and the like. All right, all right. So that said, I'm just going to go through this. This is the same thing now that you have. Okay, all right. Now, they mentioned that there's two basic ways that you can develop games in iOS. You can use either SpriteKit or you can use Unity. You may have heard of Unity already. One of the advantages of using Unity is Unity is cross-platform. In other words, you can create a Unity game and run it on either one. You may have to make changes. I don't know. But if you go through this, you know, this is also out there in, in uh, electronic form. But if you do, you'll notice when you look through it enough, they've even got Unity tutorials and a Unity video tutorial series. So if you ever wanted to teach yourself that as a next step, you'd be able to do that. So again, first he talks about it, and he says Sprite Kit is easy, it's powerful, it's fully supported by Apple. Again, take that with a grain of salt because they say Swift is an easy language to get started with. I don't think Swift is a hard language. I think it'd be a bear of a language to learn as your first language. I really do. This, that's just my feeling. I think where you learned it in, in your journey, so to speak, you know, basically going through it in the fourth semester is a pretty good place for it. All right? And if I did have a beginning iOS and, adva and an advanced iOS class, if I was ever allowed to do that, I think the beginning one, what we, would, we would have part of it would be in C, then we'd go into Objective-C. And we'd spend a lot of time on Objective-C, starting with writing really simple programs and getting into things that's a, that are a little bit more complex. Then toward the end, starting to go into Swift. All right, that's the way that I would do it. So they talk about Sprite Kit versus Unity in here. And what the author says, again, you can read these yourselves. I don't want to. All right. But the bottom line is what he gets to is he says, if you're building a simple game and you know you're only going to use it on iOS ever, that they recommend that you use Sprite Kit. If you're going to build a more complex game, you want probably a little bit easier to work with interface, et cetera, and you want to port it over to different platforms, you probably want to use Unity. All right? And that's what he basically says in here on page two. So I'm not going to, you know, and he said a little bit of that is in here too. All right. So what's different when we look here, and I'm on page three now, is that when you start up a new project, you choose game. And what you end up getting is not what they show in the book because, again, it's not what they show on here because this is a little old, all right? The author says, well, when you do this and you fill in all your stuff, you're going to get this. It says, hello world on it, and when you click on it, it's going to show a, a little spaceship. It's not what you get anymore because when you build it, you get a very futuristic-looking spaceship that keeps twirling around. So you get that by default. But there was, I saw no hello world, and it wasn't gray like this. All right? And again, I don't remember when this, but I think this was October. Yeah. So this is not that old. October of 2014. You know, that we're talking about six or seven months. All right. Yes, we're going to get into, into that a little bit in here, so. So again, you can look at it that way, yeah. So as the author says, in this tutorial, you'll mainly be working with game scene. And you know how to do this already. He says that most games are going to be in landscape mode, so he turns off portrait. All right?
right? No biggie right there. All right. And that then next he says, come in here and remove all the, all the stuff that was in GameController.Swift and put in this stuff. Well, the first thing to notice is you're importing SpriteKit. All right. When you bring in the game stuff, it doesn't look just like this. In other words, there's not just import UI kit. There were two or three other things that were imported that are not shown on here. Because again, it has changed since October and now. All right. So I thought, well, what the hell? Just for the hell of it, I'll take those two, two other things under UI kit and I'll comment them out. As soon as you comment them out, the stuff that is in there, of course, you get all these errors in there because it, it, the stuff needs it. But they tell you to remove all that stuff and replace it with this. Well, when I did, again, I got two errors. The first error, like I mentioned before, was this line right here in blue. It did not recognize game scene. All right. So I thought, well, maybe it's in, maybe it's part of game view controller. So I tried typing in game view controller dot, and it didn't show game scene, and it didn't show it under UI view controller. So I'm not sure where they got it from, or if it's changed or whatever. Like I said, the funny thing is, if you know you've got the code for this. The code for this example is right there. Sprite kit simple, simple game dot swift. And so everything that we're talking about right now is in here. So all the stuff that they mention here, okay, is in there. The other problem that I had, it was interesting because I typed this in, this line right here. I typed it in exactly as it was shown. And it gave me an error and it said that show FPS is not a member of SK view. Okay? So I said fine. So I typed in SK view dot and searched just for the hell of it and found show show as FPS. And as soon as I put that in and I kept the old other line in there, they were identical except the line I typed in errored out, and the line they put in didn't have an error in it. Now, again, it's one of those, explain me that, because I didn't get it. And I thought, well, maybe I left the S off, and I said, show. No, that's why I put it in there. They were identical to one another. So I don't know what was wrong with me typing it in. I have no idea. All right? All right, everywhere you see the SK in here, that's Sprite Kit. Okay, when you're working with a view controller, you're working with a view. You know a view is basically a screen. In here, they're more often than not, they're referred to as scenes. Okay, so a lot of times, rather than, than a view controller view, you'll hear it called a sprite kit or an SK scene. Okay? All right. Now, do I know what every single thing in here does? No. All right. I read through this a couple times. What I, the reason that I like these uh, Wenderlich tutorials is typically he'll do something like this, as shown here, and he'll put comments in there, and then afterwards he'll explain what he did there. Okay? For instance, this is what brought in the ninja. Does everybody understand what a sprite is? Yeah, it's a soda. No, no, it's not. It's more than that. All right? Yeah, basically it's some kind of an image. Right? Yeah, normally it's a smaller type of an image, but it can it could be bigger too, depending on what you're using it for. All right, so this is basically setting up the ninja for us right there. This you already can figure out sets the background color to white. This is positioning the ninja on the screen. All right, and that's basically adding it when you get done, and that's what they explain here. I'm not going to read any of that to you. You can read it yourselves if you have an interest. So it says put that in there, run it. And boom, you get your ninja. So right now, that's fine, but the ninja can't do much of anything, can't move, can't do, you know, can't shoot yet, can't do anything. So they're a third of the way through this, and they've got this little dot almost, this little black dot on the screen. All right. So the author, the author says, next, we want some monsters for the ninja to combat. And much of it is going to end up being, being kind of the same thing when you actually go in there to add the monster, when you look at this. Now, when you look up here, well, what about that stuff? Well, think about what they're doing. He doesn't want every monster to come from the same exact spot, all right, because it'd be too easy to kill them all that way. So he's putting some random stuff in here 
so that the monsters are going to end up appearing from random you know, kind of directions. So look at it this way, that if your screen looks like this, I'm just drawing a circle on the board, and in the, the left-hand corner, you've got the ninja, the monsters are going to be basically coming up from in here, like that, that quadrant, or whatever you'd call it. So he wants to make sure that they're coming from different directions. So that's what that's doing up in that random thing that you see right there, all right? And then when you look here, it's kind of the same thing. He's adding a sprite, but this one, it's the monster image, all right? He's positioning it, okay? Or he says, determine where to spawn it along the y-axis, and he's doing, these are working together to position it, then he's adding it, all right? Notice then, determine the speed of the monster, all right? You could go in and do a lot of stuff with this, so for example, you could set it up so you could, you could probably have a very simple version of the game. In step one, you might have three monsters, and they might come really slow, right? So the person you know, gets used to it. Then in step two, maybe you have double the monsters, and they come faster. So these would be the things with a duration that you would go and start tweaking if you decided that you wanted to put, you know, put something into it where you had different stages or different levels. All right, he goes through here, and, and again, I liked what he did, and I'm not going to read this to you, but I'll leave it up here for a second, but if you look here, it says, here are the three actions that you use on the monster. All right, and I'll let you look at that real quickly. All right, so we're moving it to the left, so that's the monster coming in, removing it from the parent, okay? It says we want to delete it from the scene, so basically you've shot it. But the idea is you have to make sure, because it happens pretty fast, if, if, if these projectiles, which we haven't even gotten through yet, if the projectiles come and it goes through a monster, you've got to make sure that at that time, all right, that you basically get the remove from parent and you call it then, because if it's already gone, it might be too late to call it. And even though you shot the monster, it's going to keep coming. You know, that's like writing a program where you answer 20 questions and you do it with 21 answers and you get 47%. You know, you wouldn't want something like that. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right, again, one last thing to do. You need to actually call the method to create the monsters. So notice what he's doing. He's having them continuously spawn basically every second. Again, that's another thing you could jack with that time. You could decide that rather than having just one ninja, you might want to have multiple ninjas. All right? If you, and, and if you knew a lot more about this than I did, if you had multiple ninjas, you could set it up almost as though it was dual controllers. If you really knew what you were doing, you see what I'm saying? Where two people could be shooting yeah, you could have the equivalent of a multiplayer type of thing. All right. All right. So you build it, and that's what you start to see. The monsters are coming toward it. All right. All right. So it says, at this point, the ninja is just begging for some action, so let's add some shooting. And it says there's many ways we could do this. When I first looked at it, 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 it again, it became more complex than I thought it would, but I thought it was going to be pretty simple. I was going to try to change this. I didn't know Steve was going to be gone, and I was going to see if I could have him shoot bacon. I really, truly was. All right, it just didn't work out. So. so this is where he gets into talking a little bit about trigonometry right here. All right? And again, the idea is when you start to shoot, when the projectile comes out, when the projectile hits what you're aiming at, you've got to find a way that the program understands that something has happened that is part of the game by doing that, all right? In other words, I don't want to just keep shooting monsters as they're coming through and have nothing happen. I want to be able to score and let, you know, so I want some kind of a counter, monsters hit or whatever, and I want to be adding to that counter, okay? And I want to be using that remove from parent to remove that monster from the screen, okay? Again, the, the, um, the graphics that are in here, as you can already see, they're, they're, they're pretty simplistic, raw, whatever you want to call them. And this little thing, you can't really see it in here, but that's one of the projectiles. It, it almost looks like a puff of smoke that's coming out when you shoot it. All right.
Now, this is kind of important, and I don't know if we even talked about this back in the C class, but I want you to, I want you to at least hopefully, if nothing else, hear this. All right? Because believe it or not, you've seen this kind of thing before, but you've seen it in Java. What they're doing right here is they're not oper they're not overloading functions, they're overloading operators. You can do that in the C and the C++ and I think in C# -sharp also languages and you can do it in Swift. So in other words, by default, plus adds, minus subtracts, etc. But if you overload them, you can have them do anything you want them to do. All right. And that's what he's talking about. So it says to run these calculations, it, it helps to have some basic uh, vector math routines that you can call. It says, however, SpriteKit doesn't have these by default. Luckily, they're very easy to write thanks to the power of Swift operator overloading. So it says that if you don't know how to do it, you can use this. And again, he comes through here and he explains what's going on. He puts comments here, and then underneath it, or on the next page, he explains what's going on. So it's kind of nice to see this. Choose one of the touches to work with. Set up the initial location of the projectile. Determine the offset, etc. I mean, I read this. I don't consider myself much more well-versed on writing a game after reading it. But at least I understood what the guy was trying to do. All right. So again, there's the little poops. And this starts to get into what I mentioned before. It says, you now have these things flying everywhere. But what your ninja really wants to do is lay some smack down. That's what the author says here. One of the nice things about Sprite Kit is that it comes with a physics engine built right in. And I, I've said this kind of thing to you before. If one of your goals, I don't care if it's coming into here, if it's learning web design on your own, et cetera. So I've had a lot of people, probably I bet you I've had two or three dozen people in the last four or five years call and say, do you have any game programming? Do you, do you offer any game programming courses? No. All right. But if we did, you, you would have to really have more of a math background than just the logic class that you take here. And that, that's not a rip on the logic class, not at all. I think it's a great class. But you have to understand vector systems. Or it would have to be taught by somebody who really understands vector systems. Okay. Very interesting. I, this is an aside, but Stefan told me something this morning, and I don't know if you've heard this, there is now a class, I don't know if it's going to go away, if you haven't heard, at the end of a year from now, so in May 2016, the marketing program here is going to cease to exist. They're suspending it, which means they may or may not ever bring it back. But the reason I'm telling you that um, is supposedly now, and I don't know the person who teaches it, but there's a young guy who teaches a course in there that's called something like... Um, Market, w marketing websites or websites for marketing. It's one of those two. Travis might want to take it because it's a Joomla class. Yeah. It's a two-credit Joomla class, which I just found really interesting. Another example how no one at this institution talks to anybody else. All right. Yeah, there you go. All right. So... The author says here, let's set up the game to use Sprite Kit's physics engine to determine when monsters and projectiles collide. That's that collision detection that we mentioned before. All right, it says, at a high level, here's what you're going to do. First, set up the physics world. Simulation space for running physics calculations. You're like, I don't know how to do that. You, know, you don't have to. Some of the stuff has been done for you already. You just have to know what to call. Next, create physics bodies for each sprite. All right, next, select a category for each type of sprite and finally send a contact delegate. Remember that word before? We talked about that in this class, what a delegate is. All right, if you add a delegate to your code, what that means is you're going to have something else doing your work for you, so to speak. All right. So you should be able to at least look at this stuff that's in here and understand what they're doing right there. They're setting up some constants, and they're sticking them inside of a structure. Again, that where it says struct right there, that is actually a C component that they brought into Objective-C, and they've also brought it in, into uh, 
into Swift. I almost said swing, but I didn't. All right. And they get into bit masks and a lot of other things here. And it's, it's fairly complex stuff. There is a link in here someplace that says, hey, when you're doing this stuff, if you get a little confused, and they, they, they literally do give you an, another link in there that explains some of it. All right. So he goes over what's happening. Again, I'm not going to do this. But what you, wa you want to make sure of, bottom line, is the stuff I've already explained to you, that you want the monsters to be coming from random locations. All right. You want them to be coming at an interval you can control, because if they were coming you know, every tenth of a second, you couldn't shoot them fast enough, and your whole screen would be all monsters. All right? It would be very hard to play the game. All right? You also, the way that he set it up in here, the, the, the ninja can't rotate, and the ninja can only shoot forward. And the ninja really isn't there. It's about here. But it, couldn't, it can't shoot backwards in the way that it is. Now, would you want that? Possibly. All right? Because you might want to set it up, well, that monster got by me, but I want to be able to shoot him from, you know, from behind type of thing. All right, so that might be something that you'd want to put into if you were going to create a game like that. All right, so he talks about the contact test, bit mask, and the collision bit mask. And if you've never heard of bit masking before, you know, I think we've talked about this, but if I, if I do this, if I say if x greater than 3 and y less than 2, we don't care what x and y are. I don't care. But you know this already. If it does turn out that, so if up here I said x equals 10. I don't have to remember what it is. All right? I don't even have to check this, right? Because, I'm sorry, uh, it's an and. So let's say, okay, we'll say that y equals 1. Now they're both true. But if I change that to an or, all right, then it doesn't matter. This can be 100, right? And it still is going to be correct. Okay. And remember, the reason I'm telling you that is there's short-circuiting in this language that says if you're doing an and and the first one's false, don't check the second one. If you're doing an or and the first one's true, don't check the second one. But if you put in just a single one, you're bit masking. You're telling it to check each one no matter what. All right. So when you're doing bit masking, and, and I hate going into this stuff because I usually screw it up, but imagine right here I had this, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, all right? I don't know if you've ever done any binary where you actually look at that stuff, but that's, the, that's 1, 2, 4, and 8. And if I add 8, 4, 2, and 1, I get 15, correct? Okay. So I've, if I've got that number, and let's say here I've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, all right? If I and these two, they have to both be 1 here. So that would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Does that make sense? All right. And if I or these, the way they're set up now, it's going to look just like the bottom one. So if I or it, it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1. All right. And the bottom line is, when you start working with this stuff, you can not only do this, but you can shift things. Right and left, you can do bit shifting. And I could go into this little song and dance t for you that says, really, that, and, and you may or may not believe it, but there's really only like one or two operations any computer could do. It, it doesn't do subtraction, addition, multiplication, and division. It doesn't do those. So what, what, you're wrong. It does. Yes, no, it doesn't. It does bit shifting for all this stuff. Because computers are made to optimize everything that they can optimize. So in other words, if I, bit, if I go over here and I bit shift to the right, what happens? Well, <clears throat> let's, so let's say that I bit shift to the right, which would be two greater than signs, two. All right? Then this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right? And you say, well, big deal. Well, what is that? 1 and 2 is, is 3, right? And that's division. All right? Because what I've just done by doing that is I've divided by 3. And you say, well, 3? Yeah, by the 2 that I've removed. And if I go the other way, so if I take this thing right here, and I say take that and left shift it by 2, then it becomes 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All right? 
And that's how all these operations are done. And does that matter to you as an application programmer? Probably not in the least. If you were going to program operating systems, that's what you work with all the time. If you're going to program games, you have to be able to do that too because you're on that kind of a level when you're programming. And to me, that's one of the reasons that A, people who are strong in math can be good game programmers, and B, a good game programmer can make a lot of money because this stuff's not that easy to do. All right. So he explains what's going on in here, and he talks about the detection, et cetera, and I'm not going to run through that. And then finally, the way they finish it up in here is they do add sound to it. I will tell you that the sound is as crude as the actual little ninja and the other stuff I showed you. So that the actual sound that plays, it's, it's kind of haunting. It just didn't sound very good. So there's one sound that basically plays throughout the entire game. And there's another sound that when you take and shoot, when the ninja actually shoots, when shoots out a projectile, that makes a sound. So he talks in the end about how doing about doing that. He says, you already have some cool background music I made and an awesome pew pew sound in your project. And that's about what they are. They're kind of pew pew. All right. But the good news is there's not a lot of code to add them. And like a good programmer, one of the things that he does here is he checks to make sure that it's there. All right. And then he just basically puts it in one of them at least into an infinite loop. So it plays all the time. All right. And finally he says, okay, we've done all that stuff, but we've got to find a way to say whether or not you've won the game or whether or not you've lost the game. All right. It's it's funny because the when I showed you this at the beginning, and I, I'm not gonna I'm just about done, but I just wanted to mention this to you. I showed you, let's see. I showed you uh, this one. I have no idea how to play this game. Now, I probably should have spent more time reading it, but what happens is you're right here, and you got little, uh, they're like projectiles coming at you. But I tried clicking, I tried moving this, I can move this, you can move this up and down, but I couldn't get it to fire at those things that were coming at me. Well, maybe you just want to try to avoid it. I did that, and I w it's not very hard because it doesn't work very fast, and I was able to avoid them for like two or three minutes, but the game just kept playing. But as soon as, as soon as I let one hit me, the game ended. All right, so I don't know exactly what it was simulating. The code in here looked like it might have been a little bit easier to understand than the stuff I just have been going over with you. That could be. But typically, it depends on the type of, I, I wouldn't call that then a flight simulator. I would call that basically a, an action simulator. A flight simulator should simulate, simulate you flying, not necessarily you flying, but somebody shooting at you. You know what I'm saying? If, I, if I'm a pilot, I, I'm, you know, m most pilots today, unless I'm a military pilot, you're right. It could be a special kind of flight simulation. All right. So he comes over here, and he, again, he's trying to figure out in here whether or not you've won or you've lost. And what he talks about basically in here is, again, if you end up shooting 30 or more monsters, you win. Otherwise, you lose. And he goes through the lose action first, and he tells you why he did the lose action first. I'll let you read that if you're interested. And it, it's pretty crude. It just comes back if you do win, and it says you won. All right, is it any better than that? I don't know. I played it about 10 times, and I never won. In fact, I didn't even come close to winning. It was enough just to hit a monster or two. All right? So the source code you've got out there, and this guy, he does have a book, iOS Games by Tutorials. And you may or may not remember, but last year, and, I, and everybody who's in here, except for Brad, but everybody else who's in here, you were in that class last semester. This is the same guy who wrote that book that had the bullseye thing in it. All right? And it was somebody from Ray Wenderlich that, 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 uh, that had that. In fact, I've even mentioned this because somebody had asked me about it, 
And I said, I wouldn't even care if you wanted for your project, you wanted to go back and write that bullseye game, but write it in Swift. There you go. Yeah, that iOS apprentice. Don't know why it's not opening, but it says it's still waiting. But I, you know, I, I have not looked at this book. I'm not saying buy this book. I'm not saying anything like that. But I would say that if I was really going to do a class, there you go. If I was really going to do a class that, that was going to get into games, I'd probably look into purchasing this book. All right. Yeah. Let's see, iOS games by tutorials. movement, go to Sprite Kit Game Loop right away, Scenes, Scrolling, OS X, Labels, whole big thing on their physics system. All right, that's probably where I'd start. And it's got five stars, which, again, today with five people commenting on it doesn't really mean a whole hell of a lot. Should be in Swift, I believe. There are a lot of good tutorials that are out there where the games are written in Objective-C. I mean, a lot of them. Right. Okay, so that's, like I said, so it was 45 minutes. That's really all that I had. So you will have lab Thursday, lab all of next week, and lab all of the following week. Again, it is my sincere hope that when I go home, when I go home on the 13th or 14th, I guess, I guess the 14th, Remember, in the, in the morning of the 14th, you're going to be doing your dip presentations. All right, that's two weeks from Thursday. All right? And, um, but in the afternoon, you'll have everything turned in so I can grade the stuff over the weekend. If I can grade the stuff over the weekend, you'll be able to email me and, you know, say, what's my grade? Remember, I can't tell you, but I can go, I can do this. I can say I, in real little letters, I can say I can't tell you like type of thing all right I can't do it in here because remember when you're working with notepad I can only change the font of everything but I'll, I'll say something to you like this I'll say I can't tell you your grade grade all right and I'll grab that one and now I can grab And if you can't figure it out from that, you're not going to be able to figure it out. Of course, yours I'll have to write, Travis likes Apple. All right, so that's all that I have.